It's Wellness Wednesdays. It's Wellness Wednesdays. And we're going to talk more about this idea of um, wisdom, emotional intelligence. Hi, Scout. Because it was very, like, male-oriented. Uh, my channel's 90% male viewership, so it makes sense. Um, but I do want to talk about that social component and the the different... One of the things about emotional intelligence is recognizing that sometimes there's a right way or a wrong way to do things in terms of process. Sometimes, hi Scout, um, there's different ways of communicating and they are the way people are more comfortable doing it. And if you wanna navigate social groups and relationships you know, more effectively and more efficiently, it's very important to not get stuck in right answer, wrong answer. And that's why I don't like the idea of calling it emotional intelligence. I prefer calling it wisdom because right answer, wrong answer is intelligence, right? There is a right answer. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes there's no right, there's no wrong. It's meeting someone halfway. And... People say social media has wrecked this, but in my experience, people generally suck at perspective taking. That's, that's what they call the technique. Trying to see if there's another perfectly valid way to think about the same thing. And I... I don't know why I ended up, uh, maybe because, you know, I write stories and I'm a performer and so taking on characters and writing characters and performing characters, you realize, you know, different people come at things in different ways. Um, and when, you know, when I did Boss Fight, they played a whole bunch of different ones. Uh, when I'm writing stuff for the game and I'm going back and forth in character voice, you know, it's not just that Solomon, Princess Sparkle Muffin and Beelzebub talk differently. They have different vocabularies, yeah, but they solve problems dif differently. They think about things differently. You know, Princess Sparkle Muffin never outrages. She's always like, sure. <laughs> Princess Sparkle Muffin if in doubt, will do things somebody else's way. Because she can. Because she's the princess. Because ultimately, you know, the only, the only people above her are the king and queen. And so she's really nice to everybody. Because, right? That, that's the cool thing about the way that character went. She's really nice, not because she's stupid. She's nice because she can be, right? And sometimes that gets her into trouble when she's at a place where mom and dad aren't in control. But, right, that is not me, obviously. That was a really interesting headspace to get into because I am not a princess. I never identified with the princesses. I was always the one that had to fight for everything I had. And it was a real transition doing this stuff and doing my own media stuff because when I was in TV it was still fighting for everything right just just because you're on television doesn't mean you have any power even I mean my top job was senior producer but there were executive producers uh above me and um you know then there was station and network and all that stuff and when you're second tier down, you're the one that has to say no. So, so the executive producers can be the nice guy. And so you're the one nobody likes. And then I had to be on camera too. It was not ideal. Um, and pivoting to this format where, you know, it. this is an example of, of perspective taking, right? For me... When the comment section gets rowdy or there's a Twitter dog pile, 
It's like hundreds of people yelling at me and just me. That's my perspective. But the feedback I was getting is, but if you, if you clap back at that, you're punching down. Well, that's interesting because it don't feel like punching down. But that person is not coming at it from the hundreds, the masses, right? That person is coming at it from the parasocial relationship they're having with me. And so, you know, if I outrage about something, they take it personally because they're not necessarily aware of the hundreds of nasty comments I'm getting. They just know the parasocial relationship between me and them. And that's a tough one. That's a tough needle to thread sometimes because emotions are real and I, I don't like to pretend things don't bother me that do because... There's too much of that. And I'm talking about emotional intelligence and wisdom and emotional honesty, and that would be hypocritical. But what I figured out, and I think it works pretty well, is the Feedback Friday format where I don't, I can ignore negatives and focus on positives because I want to encourage productive feedback. And... I don't consider useful criticism a negative. If somebody is really well worded and something is legitimately a mistake, um, that's good. You know, it's totally fine to point it out. If it's a... I got to be careful because I don't want any... I, I don't want to get too specific in an example and have somebody feel, you know, called out. Um, If it is just somebody wanting a format that is not, um, is not tailored to them to be tailored to them, that's not useful. And if somebody keeps on about it, it gets tiring. Um, but that that's an example of a perspective that obviously, you, you know, experience helps a lot with this stuff. Yes, I am brushing scout while I do this. Um, experience helps, you know, being in being in people, other people's chats and seeing the way they do things, um, you know, being a consumer of content myself, um, being a fan of things and, you know, having creators be pretty mean to me. It sucks when uh, someone whose work you really like is an asshole to you. Um, there was a period of time, I think I talked about this last week too, There's a period of time where all the bands I liked were dicks to me in the on the music channel I worked with, and it just... I could not listen to alt-rock grunge stuff for the longest time because they were all fucking dicks. And some of them, even if they weren't nasty to me, they were clearly lying about something. Um, I remember, this is a bit of a call out here, but these are famous people, so it's different. Um, I used to love the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And then they were through and... They were talking about how one of the guys in the band was clean currently. And he had a sleeve of medical tape. And you could see the source underneath the tape. They were just lying, like lying through their teeth. And I couldn't. No matter how long I I work in media... I have real issues separating the art from the artist. And I think part of it is because we had um, we had certain ethical requirements because it was youth oriented. And, you know, it's not like programming for adults. You can't. I didn't think it was right to go out and lie to teenagers. I don't think it's good to go out and just outright lie, period. Um, because. That takes a lot of work 
And I believe you will eventually get caught. Omission is one thing. Not wanting to talk about it, that's one thing. But actually lying, and I know people do it. I mean, I've done it. I've had to do it for work because I was ordered to. And it just feels gross. And I think maybe that's what put me off of it. Because, you know, when, when you're not in charge, you don't get to decide how certain things are handled. And usually if it gets to that point now, it's one thing about withholding information because it's not time to talk about it or somebody has to have a conversation or something, right? It's another thing just to lie because it's easier short term. Uh, and, and I think it might have been those experiences because before, you know, before these bands came through, I fucking worship these people. Right. And then to find out they were just overt liars. You know, they didn't have to say anything at all. Just to like flat out lie. I couldn't, you know, that's different than, you know, the Beastie Boys being just assholes and the Smashing Pumpkins being just assholes. Lying, but it's a habit, right? Now, I don't think that's healthy, and I don't think that's wise to tell unnecessary lies, you know? There are some lies that it's just, all right, you don't want to hurt your mom's feelings, you know, something like that, but... You really got to watch it and you really got to be aware because I think a lot of people, um, and this is perspective taking again, they start doing it so often that they lose the ability to recognize that it is a lie, if that makes any sense. And that would suck. That's a hard thing to come out of because, you know, there were some people when I worked in... TV that would lie and then look at other people like you got to back me up and so they'd make other people complicit in their lie and a lot of time everybody knew they were lying but nobody could call them on it they you know they were usually people in position of power and and everybody knew they were full of shit but what could anybody do that eats at your soul. Now, some people may not have a problem with it. I don't know how. But everything has, everyone has something that eats at their soul. It may not be, um, a direct line. Like, I know for me, part of my deal with lying is because, um, there were a lot of situations when I was a kid. I don't know why, but another person was lying. I was telling the truth, but the adults got it wrong. And I was punished for lying, even though I was the one that told the truth. And knowing how easy that is, knowing that it is subjective and people get it wrong has stayed with me. To the point that I guess I just don't want to put people in that position, you know, because I, I, you know, I did a bunch of research on on how good people are at knowing whether someone's lying and the average person is no better than chance. That doesn't mean you can't get better at it, but perspective taking is a big, a big benefit um, when you're trying to get to the bottom of what really happened in a situation. Because then there are other times where someone's not lying. They truly believe what they say happened, happened. It's different interpretations, right? Like, have you ever been in a situation where someone said, look, just, you know, so they're like, leave me alone for five minutes. And they get, you know, they said they hated me. What? I didn't say that. But 
they jump steps and they think when someone says, leave me alone, get out of here, it means they hate them. And you have to go, did they say that or was that the message they got? That's what they said. Okay, repeat back to me the words they used. And usually then they will pause. Because then they're recalling the memory and they realize they didn't actually say that. Now, some people are so thrown. They're so overwhelmed that they actually do remember something that the person didn't say. Because that's how it made them feel. And that's a different problem than someone knowingly lying. You know, that's a person who is really overwhelmed and needs a break. Sometimes they won't take it and then you've got a big problem on your hands. But it's really important to develop this skill once you can have healthy conflict, but also so that you can avoid unnecessary conflicts. You can be deceived less. You can be a better judge of character. But you also don't jump to a more negative conclusion than is needed. And for whatever reason, society has taught a lot of people that empathy is weakness or that empathy is dumb. There's a right answer and a wrong answer and you just don't know the right answer. And that makes me sad because a lot of people have falling outs because of that. And they're both good people but they can't see where the other person is coming from. And, so, and sometimes it is just because one person just won't budge. They are being so socially stubborn that they must have things their way. And having healthy boundaries means that you can't compromise on some things to get the thing that you want. And... On, on one of the interviews with this on therapy, it was sort of a being a light went on when a, because I realized I did this too and, and wasn't aware of it that, you know, um, one of, it was a people pleasing episode and the, the woman I interviewed said that she is more uh, loose with time. You know, she'll go five extra minutes with a client who respects time. But when someone is constantly pushing for five, 10 extra minutes or 15 or 20, she wraps it up right there. And, and it's true. When someone is constantly pushing you, it's reasonable to get more rigid. Ideally, you have relationships where everybody respects everyone. And so that doesn't, no one has to dig in. And when someone is digging in, they can be being completely unreasonable, legitimately completely unreasonable. But in order to solve the conflict, you have to find the valid emotional need. And everybody has to work together so that people are validating the feelings at play without rewarding legitimately bad behavior. You know, you can't say an accusation is true when it's not true. Right. That's why it's very important just to talk about how something made you feel instead of you accused me or something like that. Because one is, no, I didn't. You know, you're talking about intent I just didn't have. If you felt it, OK, but I wasn't doing that. And it's very important if somebody's giving you that, you give them that they didn't mean it. Stuff like that. And it's all about the the tightrope walk of putting yourself in another person's shoes even though you know you can't read their mind. And that is a game of knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, and knowing there are some things you know you, you don't know, you don't know. So something like, you know, if I was in their position, I wouldn't like to feel falsely accused. You can assume that, right? Um, it's not always right, but uh, 
you know, I've gotten in situations where I think, all right, I wouldn't be knowingly offending someone right off the bat. And the person said, oh, no, I totally did it on purpose. OK, we have a problem. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't like people who knowingly just offend someone. It's one thing to think someone's being oversensitive, but honoring the sensitivity. It's another thing to deliberately tweak someone. I think that's cruel. But then they say, but they're manipulating that way. Okay, so get away from them. You know, avoid them as much as possible. Don't, you know, don't have the unnecessary conflict because if they say you did that on purpose, well, you did. And generally, politically and social groups, that doesn't go well. You know, you seem like a bully. Even if, you know, you had reasons for doing it, you are intentionally antagonizing someone. But people don't stop and do that mental math. And so they end up in places they don't understand because to them, they're doing something that makes complete sense and they're defending themselves. They're not listening and thinking about how it's being interpreted from people that don't have all the information, right? It's tough. It's more art than science and it takes a lot of practice, which is why wisdom and intelligence are different skills in Dungeons and Dragons and the term emotional intelligence. It's, it's a sizzly term to sell books, but it's sort of inaccurate and... It's one of those terms I have to use because people know it, but then I go, I don't really like it. I prefer wisdom. So th there you go. Perspective taking and emotional intelligence slash wisdom. Um, if you like this stuff, Wellness Wednesday tends to be beloved by the people who watch the content, but not terribly well loved by the YouTube algorithm. So help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for somebody who can use it but can't afford it because they can target the specific things they need to work on. Six people on the list right now, coffee.com slash Leanna K. If you want to sign up for a Leanna, K, Leanna Care session, do it with the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching and be well.